guys, Jeff Schneider here. Today we're talking about tritone substitution. And I'm gonna teach you that lick that I played just now because it uses tritone substitution uh, in a way that I like to uh, to make use of it. So first of all, what's a tritone? Tritone is three whole steps. Tri means three, tone means whole step. So you have a C and then you have a D above that and then an E above that and then an F sharp above that. That's three whole steps, meaning C and F sharp are tritone away from one another. Now your turn, let's try D. What's a tritone away from D? You can go up or down, doesn't matter, but let's go up. So D, whole step up from that is E, then you have a whole step up from that, which is F sharp, and then one more whole step, you get to G sharp. So D and G sharp are a tritone away from each other. It's an interval, okay? Now, it works with chords like this. C7 and F sharp 7 are a tritone away from one another. But if you look at the third and the seventh of each of those chords, you'll find that they're the same. Check this out. C7, the third is E, and the seventh is B flat. F sharp seven, the third is B flat, and the seventh is E. So it's flipped, but the two notes are the same. The third and the seventh are the same, which is why these chords work so well together uh, for substituting for one another. Now, the root and the fifth of each chord are different, but that's what kind of gives it the, uh, the more outside sound. Anyway, um, some of you already know this, but that's a very, very quick explanation as to what tritone substitution is all about. So now let's get into that lick that I played at the beginning. It goes like this, real slow. This is gonna be um, over a concert F7 chord going to a concert B flat chord. It's like a five to one, check it out. Now the real crux of it, the real tritone-y part is the very, uh, the very beginning, this arpeggio. I'm starting on F, which is the root of the five chord, but then I'm arpeggiating the triad of a tritone away from F, which is the B major triad. In my case, in my alto case, the, uh, the A flat major triad. So I'm going from the F, I'm talking in concert, I'll talk in concert key from now on. So you go from the F, then I'm gonna go up a half step to F sharp, which is the fifth of the B major triad, which is, and B major is a tritone away from uh, from F. So starting on F, going up to F sharp, and remember F sharp is the fifth, and now we're gonna go up that triad, the B major triad, starting on the fifth. So we'll go five, one, three. F sharp, B, D sharp. And then at the top, I'm gonna play the root of the original chord again, which is F. So I'm sandwiching the tritone triad in between the root of the original chord, which is F. It's a very cool arpeggio, and I like to make use of tritone substitution like this because it, it not only plays the tritone, the notes from the tritone chord, but it also emphasizes the original chords. So you really bring out the clash and the, the outness of, of the tritone substitution because you could just play notes that fit in the tritone sub chord. You could just play the notes that fit in that B7 chord, but I like to mash it right up against the uh, the root of the F7, which is F. And just like the intervals, it, it, it gives it that out flavor, that outside flavor. And then I'm gonna come down the same way. So I'm going up and coming down the same way. And then the rest of the lick is not necessarily tritone substitution. I mean, it's playing outside the chord changes a little bit. It's making use of, um, yeah, I guess it's making use of tritone substitution. It's not as explicit as going up a triad, but here it is. So that's part two. I'll break it down one more time. Part one, we've already talked about. That's part one, and part two is this, which is E flat going to A flat, down to G flat, down to D flat, up to E flat, and then finishing on the F. In the key of F7, you think about it like this. Starting on that E flat is the flat seven, and then A flat down to G flat is the sharp nine going down to the flat nine, very common thing. And then you're landing down there on the uh, the sharp five, which is D flat. 
and sharp five can also be thought of as flat 13 in this case. And then you're going from that flat 13 back to the flat seven, which is E flat. And then finally, you're landing on F, which is the five of the one chord, which is B flat. Just to sum up, that whole progression was five going to one, or F7 going to B flat major. Now you can practice this lick and play it verbatim and it'll sound really cool, but what I encourage you to do is take a look at the nugget, the, the kind of principle that's within this lick that you can repurpose for other situations. So what I think the, the, the reason that the lick sounds cool, as I said, is the mashing up of the original, the root of the original chord with the triad of the tritone sub. So the root of the original chord is F, and then the triad from the tritone sub is a B major chord. So with that in mind, I'm gonna give you some variations on using that principle, the triad uh, from the sub mashed up against the root from the original chord. Here's another one. Lots of different variations, lots of possibilities, but the general principle is the same. So use that strategy for whatever licks you're transcribing, whatever solos you're transcribing. Find out what it is that you like about that solo. Find out what it is that you like about that line and see if you can repurpose that little nugget of information into other ways. And that's gonna be how you develop your own ideas and kind of pull from different sources and create your own style and voice. So let me know how that goes. Questions and comments, always welcome. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Schneider. See you in the next video. Thank you.